Buckle time. So I've just been away in France for the best part of two weeks and I'm back now. Um, so some of these books were bought um, in charity shop halls, etc. before we went away and some of them during. And uh, we'll get to those in a bit. So I'm going to do the paperbacks first and then the lovely hardbacks. First up then um, is a greatest hits of A. Van Vogt. So it's a collection of his short stories. There are a bunch in there. And I got a Terry Pratchett, Lords and Ladies. Uh, I don't know why, I feel slightly obsessed about collecting these. Uh, I, I, and if I see them that I don't have, then I pick them up. Um, whether I'll read them or not, I don't know. I hope that that someday will be the case. Um, but it's in nice condition. And I've got two Piers Anthony books. This is a habit that I seem to be developing of buying books that are useless to me. So this is book two of a series of which I don't have book one and this is book three of a series of which I don't have book one uh, but they can sit on my shelf uh, until books one etc turn up I'm not sure how many there are in total and then in two separate visits to charity shops I found George Martin Dragon Songs and this is a book of short stories the first volume of two and this one I was surprised to find is signed by the man himself addressed to somebody called Rika keep on dreaming. A day or two later I found the second volume which is not signed or addressed to anyone. Uh, so these again a, a collection of George Martin's short stories. <clears throat> Maybe if he was a bit less busy writing short stories he'd have finished Game of Thrones by now. All right so this one is not a charity shop purchase. This one plopped onto my doormat whilst I was away on holiday. It's one that I ordered in advance from Amazon many months ago when I knew it was coming out. So this is the third part of the Children of Time trilogy. I really enjoyed the first one, enjoyed the second one, perhaps not quite as much as the first one but but well enough. I'm intrigued to know whether the third one is as is, is anything um, like as good as the first two. I hope so. So that was new, I paid new book money for that. Richard Cowper, Clone, it's one of the pan lozenge, there's 60 odd or 80 odd pan lozenge books that there are which thanks to Steve Outlaw Bookseller I'm, I'm now obsessed with collecting. So if I see these for cheap on eBay, if I find them in the wild then I'm going to pick them up. Um, so that's Richard Cowper or Cooper, um, clone, Robert Heinlein's Puppet Master, which which um, a book collecting friend uh, sent me. Um, it was a spare of his. So that's two to my, add to my very small collection of under 10 of those. I've got uh, an Ian Watson, The Very Slow Time Machine, which is a novel, it was published in... 1979 it's the first edition it's not an author that i know and i don't know anything about the book so but the premise sounds interesting uh, the very slow time machine arrives on earth in 1985 its sole inhabitant is old and mad a bit like me soon it becomes apparent that for him time is going slowly backwards with every day he's getting younger and saner the world and its whole concept of time science and philosophy must wait for him to speak but while the world waits it changes so it's intriguing i'm sold i'd like to read it uh shiny um that is shiny isn't it uh John Varley book uh, Millennium, which starts with a um, with a appalling midair collision between a DC-10 and a 747. Um, I, I mainly like the I've given it a polish, so it's particularly shiny. It's got a little see-through kind of peephole cover, which is always fun. I've only read one book by John Varley, uh, which is Red Thunder. More on that later, which I really enjoyed. I mean, it's kind of silly and pulpy, but but still good. And um, so I'm intrigued to read that as well. So the aforementioned Chris of Derbyshire sent me. Um, for, you know, for money, a few uh, John Wyndham's from his pile of spares. They are not, um, and he was at pains to say, they're not in fabulous condition, but they'll do for my shelves uh, for now. So there's a couple of, first up, a couple of the older John Wyndham books, which were published under his um, one of his many pseudonyms. Um, I believe John, John Bainan is part of his full name. So John, obviously, same as John Wyndham, but uh, Bainan is one of his middle names or something. Um, but there are a bunch of them. So so that's Wander, uh, Wanderers of Time and The Secret People. Both, I think that's short stories. And that's uh, his first full-length novel, apparently, published for the first time back in the day um, in 1972, although it was written in 1935. So this was before he hit the big time, before he went off to World War II, before he, long before he wrote Day of the Triffids. Um, and um, talking of his later books, I've got a couple of the um, Peter Lord covers to add to my little collection. I think I've got five or six of them now. 
uh, trouble with lichen and web which I was missing I still have a few to get I think and uh, they are uh, actually in pretty good condition except that the spines are a bit a bit faded in particular the trouble with lichen is a bit which way up or that way uh, 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 particularly faded but they both are really they should be much brighter orange than that but again they do they do look nice I, I like this is my favorite um, Wyndham edition and he also sent me the Kraken Wakes to add to my what I thought was complete collection of these um, Harry Wilcock designed 1970s covers um, I thought I had seven and that the seven was the total set in fact there are ten and in any case I only had six not seven so I, could, I just can't count um, so now I've got seven of the ten, so I'm still missing three, including Day of the Triffids, I think. I'm getting there with the Wyndhams. And um, to give you a sneak preview into a future haul, yesterday, which is very dangerous to me, I was titting about on eBay, and I found a full set of seven of the new edition of Penguin John Wyndham books for a tenner. Plus some postage, but for, they were effectively two pounds each, which is pretty good for brand new books that I didn't know I needed. So back to this haul. Uh, so I have a Robert Sheckley, Journey Beyond Tomorrow. It's an author that I've um, been interested in reading, haven't read any of yet. This is in pretty good condition. It's come up quite nicely with a bit of a polish. In slightly tattier condition is a John Sladek book, a contemporary and friend of Philip K. Dix, who admired his writing. Uh, again, I haven't. Read, I don't think I own another John Sladek book, and Roderick is certainly the first that I've got my mitts on in the wild. And then I did a, I did a silly, um, and this happens if I forget to check my magic spreadsheet, which has a record of everything that I've bought over the last few months, or I don't keep up with my record keeping and I have a backlog of things to enter into the spreadsheet so that when I refer to it, it's up to date. So I bought, uh, I'm not sure which order I bought them in, but I bought this, Robert Silverberg edited Science Fiction Hall of Fame, which is volume one of a few I think. It's a pretty sun faded towards the spine there, the front cover's a bit sun faded and it's a bit creased on the back so you know it's not perfect but that's that one. This copy is from 1974, reprint from originally uh, 1971, originally published. And then at some point in the few days that followed me buying that one I bought this which is a much newer copy of exactly the same book with exactly the same stories in it. So this is Again, the Science Fiction Hall of Fame, edited by Robert Silverberg, Volume 1. And this one was published, or printed rather, in 1998. So, getting on for 30 years later. So that was a bit silly. I, I probably, this, this is actually a nicer book in terms of its condition. And it's a nicer size as well. Um, but that's the vintage one, so I don't know. I'll probably keep both. You knew I was going to say that, right? Then I've got Brian Aldis, Billion Year Spree, which is in um you know used condition particularly on the spine it's a bit mucky but it's a, it's a solid copy it's got but it's good i don't have that one i have a few aldis books now uh some of them i think in this corgi format so that is i think i'm right in saying that is a history of science fiction so i'm not sure if it's just examples of stories but i think it's i think it's a non-fiction book tracing the history of science fiction up to that point according to Brian um, yeah comprehensive history of science fiction by Brian Aldous going all the way back to um, Shelley's Frankenstein HG Wells and and forward into the modern uh, era there's another John Varley book in the Hall of the Martian Kings quite a funky cover and I think this is short stories I believe that it has a nine stories and then an introduction by Algis Budris Michael Moorcock and I think these are both in the Eternal Champion series, so that will be the first one, presumably. Eternal Champion, the Eternal Champion, with a wacky cover on the front. And then um, the Obsidian, Phoenix in Obsidian, beg your pardon. Being the, yes, the second book of the Eternal Champion. So I don't know how many of those there are, probably umpteen, knowing Michael Moorcock. John Morrissey, Star Brat. And that's before he became the lead singer for the Smiths. Not really. Different, different Morrissey. So that one is uh, kind of pulpy looking. Uh, I think it's got no. It's a novel. Possibly a fix up from um, made up from from short stories. I don't know. And then another. So those were mostly, with the exception of this one, and the which was an eBay purchase. Richard Cowper clone and the Children of Time by Tchaikovsky, which was new and Amazon purchased. The rest of them are all um, um, 
good grief, lost the use of the English language. Charity shop purchases, thank you. These paperbacks, Old Man by John Scalzi, The Ghost Brigades by John Scalzi, and The Last Colony, also by John Scalzi, were all bought together in a job lot on eBay, and I paid £2.70 each or something like that. They're in pretty good condition. I do already have Old Man's War, actually, uh, in a slightly bigger sort of trade paperback format. Um, but these came as a set and they match in size and everything. I think I'm right in saying that there are novellas that slot between these, but these are, for, in terms of full length novels, these are books one, two, and three in the Old Man's War series. Okay, so hardbacks. As I said, I've been on holiday in France, but you, as you might expect, uh, being in a different country hasn't stopped me from buying books. Uh, I didn't find a mother load of hardback novels in a charity shop in France in English. That would have been a bit too much to expect. But the Crazy Fools allowed me to have internet access while I was there. So with some idle uh, rainy afternoons, I did a bit of eBay shopping. So uh, it was a mixed bag um, some disappointments or a few disappointments and some, um, you know, pretty good condition bargains, I think. I bought um, first up Thorns by Robert Silverberg. I've had a bit of a dispute with one of these sort of eBay book warehouse companies. I forget which one it was. Probably, probably World of Books. Um, might have been um, a different one. But um, the image that they had, it had a cover, um, and then what they actually sent me doesn't. So there's no dust jacket that goes with this. So after being cross with them in the message. Um, they gave it to me half price, so instead of eight pounds, I paid four pounds for it with it with the cover. If I if I think if I've been a bit more insistent and insisted on a refund, they might have done that for me. But I'll take it. The book itself is in good condition. It's a shame it doesn't have a cover. Continuing on the sort of Silverberg theme, I started I basically did a search on Robert Silverberg and to see what I could find uh, on eBay, and I found I have Lord Valentine's Castle, which is the first of the Magic Poor. Um, books. Uh, it's in one of the yellow SF masterworks up there. Uh, so I didn't. Uh, you can get that in hardback, but it's a bit more expensive. Th these were a few pounds. Um, so that's Valentine Pontifex, which is the second one, I think. And I've got the Mountains of Magipore, which slightly annoyingly, quite a slender book, was um, the photo, and I should know better now than to expect that the image that's shown bears any relation to the book that you actually get. But it was it was quite obviously shown with the signature by the author, Robert Silverberg's signature, on the on the title page of the book. And so naturally I thought, well, surely they wouldn't show the image of the author's signature if it wasn't actually signed. Um, and this turned up and it does not have the author's signature on it. So I had a bit of a hissy fit at them. And to be fair, it was only about £3.50, including postage, so I don't know why I expected that it would have the author's signature on it, but it didn't, and it strongly implied that it would. So after a bit of toing and froing, they gave me a full refund. Did they give me a refund for this? No, they, they um, sent me another book. Um, so I had a fish around, um, so that, that will turn up at some point in a future haul. I have bought something, a Stephen Baxter hardback, for a similar price. You, um, I won't spoil the surprise entirely. You can You can wait until the next... Um, a whole video to find out. Um, and then they said, well, you can just send this one to charity. Well, I'm not sending it to charity, I'm just going to keep it. So I've basically got two books for the price of one, although no Robert Silverberg signature. I'll probably get over it. Another Robert Silverberg, I believe this was written in the 90s, um, sometime after he wrote the third of the trilogy back in the early 80s. And it's a prequel. It's a, this is a chunky old book, so he's got sort of 90s fantasy disorder along with everyone else. Um, I think this was published in 1997, yeah. Uh, it is a first edition. So of the Magipore cycle, which is the, the first, there are four, in fact, it's Lord Valentine's Castle, which I've got, Valentine Pontifex, which, which I now have, the Magipore Chronicles, which I don't have, and then the Mountains of Magipore, which is the one that should have had a signature but didn't, disappointingly. Um, so this is about three times the size of, of the, the Mountains of Magipore. 
Majipur is a gigantic planet somewhere uh, which has a mixed population of the indigenous species who are a bit disgruntled about all of the alien species including humanity that have taken up residence on this planet. It's enormous. Um, I imagine deliberately so by Silverberg to give him a range of settings to choose from um, in the book. Um, and the story follows the sort of human population and their interactions with the aliens and, and the natives. So I've still got a couple of those to find. I'd like to have Lord Valentine's Castle in the hardback, but that's sort of bigger money, 20 quid plus, to get one in half decent condition in hardback. This one, the Pontifex one, I've just noticed actually that the spine is a bit faded. I think I don't think it's meant to be that blue colour. I think it's meant to be yellow. It's kind of washes into the front or the back colour there as well, I think. So that should be um, it's a bit spine faded, but what do you want for £3.50 or £4 something, whatever it was? The Kingdom... Kingdom of the Wall, which is not related to the Magipore series, it is um, science fantasy, so it's sort of loosely science fiction um, on the basis that it's on a strange and distant world. More than that, I don't know. It is an ex-library copy, Buckinghamshire County Library. Um, it doesn't have its slip in, so I can't tell how many people uh, borrowed it, but it's in pretty good condition, so I'm guessing not very many. Uh, but the cover's in good nick. It's a little bit sort of squished at the bottom where it's just not properly on the book and got squashed on the shelves, but otherwise in good nick. I've got, I bought this on eBay, Desolation Road by Ian MacDonald. I have this in, again in the science fiction or rather SF Masterworks paperback. Uh, I've read it. I quite enjoyed it. I think I'm right in saying it was his first novel. Um, so this is a first edition voted best novel of 1988 by a new author so it's his it's his debut novel and um, this is a first edition drunken dragon press and i bought this off of steve outlaw bookseller of this parish um who has a few books usually for sale on on ebay as he's kind of going through his collection and decluttering and focusing on what he wants to have on his shelves um, for his legacy collection, as he calls it, then um, then some things are getting um, jettisoned and um, and being passed on. So that I forget exactly what I paid for it. Eleven pound, ten pound, ten pound fifty, I think, including postage. Um, so that arrived while I was away, and very nice it is too. And this is another eBay purchase, not from Steve, just a random eBay seller, uh, Fritz Lieber. Ship of Shadows. I don't know where quite where that came up. It's published by Golanx, or I certainly wasn't searching for it specifically, so it must have been a recommendation. You know, if you like this, then you might like this. And indeed, I did. I don't think I paid very much for it a few pounds, a fiver maybe. Uh, this, I believe, is a collection of short stories. Yes, The Ship of Shadows is the first one, and then there's Catch That Zeppelin, which sounds like fun. Gonna Roll the Bones, Ill Met in Lankmar, The Belton Express, and The Big Time. Yes, yeah, so this special new collection brings together all his award-winning stories with the exception of the long novel The Wanderer, which I have a copy of, which is the one with the very foxy, uh, bare-chested Catwoman. So here we can be transported to a shadowy alternate reality where Germany won the Second World War, or watch a man play dice with the devil, or take a strange journey on an even stranger spaceship, or eavesdrop on the epic first meeting of two fantastic heroes in this collection, published in 1979. So that's in quite nice condition. Um, it's a little bit sort of boxed on the top, but um, in general the cover's in nice condition. It's not spine faded, there's no lean. So, slightly random addition to my shelves. And then, two disappointments. So when I was in my teens, I had Richard Cowper books, uh, Road to Corlay, and the two that followed. Um, Piper at the Gates of Dawn and A Dream of Kinship. I might have those in the wrong order. But... Um, uh, and I had th three of them in a paperback, nice paperback, um, which you pay a few quid for now if you want to buy them. Uh, but I sold them for pennies along with a bunch of my other science fiction and fantasy books um, for beer money. And I was um, just fooling around on eBay and, um, and wondered if you could get them in hardback. Um, and in the UK they were published by Golanx in their kind of leery yellow covers. Um, a dream of kinship this is so i think this is not the first one he has a sequel to a road to call so this is the second one it on the face of it it's not bad it's an ex-library book uh library this is the, of the two this is probably the better condition it's actually not terrible it, the covers are i mean it was described as good by world of books or someone like that so i should know better i should know that it's not going to come it's not going to be i'd be extremely fortunate if they'd mislabeled it as good when it's actually very good or fine 
and much more likely that they're going to label it good and it's going to be falling apart at the seams. So this isn't that bad. Um, the binding's okay. It's got the covers a bit tatty and it's probably not as bright as it was, but that's not too bad. And then this one is, is also a library copy. It is not related to uh, Piper of the Gates of Dawn at all. It's unrelated, published beforehand, I think, Profundus. This one is pretty knackered. It is, the binding's pretty loose. The pages are pretty fox on the top. as a sort of withdrawn mark. It's a sole library. It's got the stickers on it that you'd expect for a library. Um, and generally, oh, and some just to boot, someone's written on it on the inside too. So, um, I mean, it is the Golanx first edition, but it's a bit knackered. And I think it's at best a reading copy. Serves me right for buying books described as good from um, from a warehouse. So I mentioned earlier on John Varley, Red Thunder. So this is my copy, which was given to me by a colleague, go on, I don't know, 15 years ago. I've read it a few times. It's great fun. Um, pretty silly, but, but quite good fun. And certainly a good page turner. It really rocks along. And I was idly wondering if you could get it in hardback in the UK. And you can, although it was never published in a hardback in the UK. Neither were the... Um, unknown to me sequels there are three in total i think there's red lightning rolling thunder and dark lightning i believe is the fourth none of those are published in hardback in the uk you can get them on ebay and others but they're all u.s editions that are mostly shipped from the u.s or well. sometimes you get lucky and find one from a seller in the uk which is what i did with this one so that's the hardback first edition in really good condition it's an ace being a u.s edition you don't see those in the uk um it was published in, I think, 1990, I'm going to say 91, no, 2003, beg your pardon. Um, and this is the first edition. So I'm going to look out for the others because I'd like to have those and I haven't read them. Uh, I don't want to pay a fortune for them, but if I see them for reasonable money, because uh, I'd like to have them. And I hear that they're very good. Red Lightning in particular is meant to be very good. And then again, while I was in France on a rainy afternoon, of which there were many because the weather was a bit shit, unfortunately. Um, I uh, I started to think about replacing all of my e uh, Alistair Reynolds, which is above my head up here, I think, um, paperbacks with, with hardbacks, just idly look, kind of looking. And, and you can find them for not bad money. Obviously, you're taking a bit of a lottery when you buy them online as to the condition, but they're mostly okay. So first up in this diddy little, um, I don't know what the right name for the format is, small anyway, hardback, it's, um, it's a, a, a novella. Um, Slow Bullets, it was published in 2017, it's the first edition, it's in almost perfect condition except that there's a little rip on the spine there which, which will need some form of careful repair and when I say careful repair I mean I'll plonk a bit of sellotape on the inside cover, I'm sure that's not how a legit bookseller would do it but I am not one of those so sellotape will do. Um, but that's quite good. I don't have that at all. I don't have it in paperback, so that's new to me. And then we've got the Prefect, which I do have a paperback of that I bought in a charity shop for a couple of quid. So all of these Alistair Reynolds were between £2.50 and £4.50, that kind of money. They weren't expensive. Um, but uh, So this is the Prefect, which, is, which I think has since been reissued under a different name. Well, I can't remember. Uh, now what it was called um, but this is the the first of the I think what will be three I think only two are out so far um, following Tom Dreyfus who is a prefect in the glitter band around Yellowstone and um, this is the first edition it's in nice condition it's uh, I think nothing wrong with it it's uh, the pages are sound there's no spine lean it's it's solid the binding is good it's tight the pages are in good condition um, you know, I suppose we shouldn't be too surprised because it's only dates back to 2007, so not even 20 years old. But it's in good, it's in very nice condition. Slightly tattier, unfortunately, is Century Rain, which is actually a book of his that I don't think I've read. I've got, I do have it in paperback, but I haven't read it. Uh, I've read most of his stuff, but not this one. Um, this is mostly in okay condition. It's um, it's got. <laughs> A little rip on the bottom here which again probably need a bit of repair um, and it's a bit battered on the top where it's not been on the book properly and just got a bit squished on the shelf and um, the pages the text block at least is a bit yellow all round a bit foxed 
um, but the pages themselves on the inside are, are bright. It was published in 2004. And then we've got Zima Blue, which I think I'm right in saying is a counterpart to Galactic Norse. So these are all um, short stories. Uh, as you can see, it's a very shiny cover. It's in really nice condition, as, as good as the Prefect, honestly. Uh, published in 2009, the companion volume to Galactic North showcases Alistair Reynolds' superb writing, a decade and a half of short stories ranging from the near future into the deepest time and space. In Reynolds' universes, there may be wars, but there may, there may be catastrophes and cosmic errors, but something human will survive. I do like his writing, um, so I'm looking forward to reading that. Terminal World, which I have read but don't have a copy of in paperback or anything else. Again, it's in a pretty good condition. Um, if I remember rightly, it's a bit steampunky. Uh, so Spear Point, the last human city, is an atmosphere-piercing spire of vast size, clinging to its skin of zones, a series of semi-autonomous city-states, each of which enjoys a different and rigidly enforced level of technology. Usually you've got Horse Town and Neon Heights, different levels. Terminal World is a snarling, drooling, crazy-eyed mongrel of a book, equal parts steampunk, western, planetary romance, and far future science fiction. Um, that is in basically as new condition, there's nothing wrong with it. Finally, because I couldn't resist, although it's opened the doors to what could be quite an expensive um, follow-on, is uh, Absolution Gap, which I can, I can never remember if it's the third or the second. Yes, it's the third of the, of the original three Re uh, Revelation Space series. So that was £4.70 or something. It's in really good condition. It's the first edition. Um, text box may be a little bit yellow on the top, but is is crisp and bright. There's no spine lean. The binding is in good nick. Um, it's tight. Dates back 20 years to 2003. I would love to get Revelation Space and what's the other one? Redemption Arc, books one and two. Um, you're paying big money for that because Revelation Space was his first book. So those are chunky um, additions to my Alistair Reynolds collection. I have to decide if I'm going to keep the paperbacks or, or ditch them. I might need the room on my shelves actually so they may have to go. So the final three books are um, SF adjacent rather than SF. If you remember from my last haul I've been sort of grabbing a few Ian Banks books. Again I'm not forking out huge amounts. These are a few pounds, three or four pounds. So that's Canal Dreams by Ian Banks. It's the first edition. Very slender book. That way up, sorry. Um, published by Macmillan. Ian, 1989. So that's, it's not his first book. Uh, let me see if I can find where it comes in the pantheon of, um, of his books. Yeah. So of his non-SF books, it's one, two, three, four. It's the fifth one. So after Esper Dare Street. So published just after The Player of Games, from a science fiction point of view. Um, so that's in, S uh, thankfully, not one of the black and white boring ones. That's quite a nice addition. And again, it's nice and slender. So A, it won't take up much room on my shelves. And B, I should be able to read it. Um, pretty quickly, if I have the time. And then we have Wit, another Ian Banks, uh, so non M, non science fiction. It's got a little rip, seems to be a common theme with my recent eBay purchases, um, which is a shame, but it's otherwise in good condition and a solid book. This was published in. Hmm. We don't know because someone has ripped the, the page with all the dates and publisher details and the British Library gubbins on it, so someone's ripped that out. So actually I don't know if it's the first edition. The listing strongly implied that it was, but but we may never know. It may not have been reissued as a hardback, so it probably, probably is. And then the last one in this set is another Ian Banks, not Ian M. Banks, it's Transitions. I've got, Transition rather, I've got this in paperback. Um, unfortunately, it's damaged. It's, um, I, th I suspect, in transit, probably, because they don't pack them very well. They just come in a plastic bag. There's no bubble wrap or anything like that. So it's just got dinged in the post. You know, it may have been on their shelves like that. I don't know. But, but anyway, it's damaged, which is a shame. So I will look out for an alternative copy. They gave me a full refund. So that is one good thing in, in these sort of big book warehouses favour. They don't muck about. If you complain about something, particularly if you can take a picture of it, then... For the sake of three or four pounds, I don't care. They've got that give or whatever. We'll give you a refund. So um, I will hang on to that until I find one in better condition. So that's my um, pre and 
intra-holiday <laughs> book haul. Uh, let me know in the comments if you spot anything there that you're um, particularly jealous of or if you particularly think I should read. Uh, but that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching and we'll be back soon with another video. Thank you.